And hello, welcome to a special edition of Lexus Complex Behind the Story, where I'm going to sit down and we're just going to talk like normal adults here, out of persona, even though I'm kind of dressed in my suit here, but I'm, I'm really not that guy right now. And joining me today is Paul Slater and T.A. Sapiers, who I happen to know very well. Welcome, guys. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you. So let's talk about your feud for a minute. So you guys have been going at it like cats and dogs now for probably, what, I would say probably a few months now, yeah. maybe a little bit more. November. How did, yeah. How, so what, who was the genius that came up with this idea? That would have to be Paul. <laughs> All right, Paul. Well, you know, give us, give us the inside scoop. Uh, so... I don't know. I was thinking, you know, I was trying to add more depth um, to my character. I was doing a cesspool show, and then I talked to, you know, I talked to Tiesa, and, uh -huh. you know, I came up with the whole, I'm going to run, like, I'm so dumb, my character's so dumb that he thinks there's an election um, to be the VP. So I'm going to carry out an election, hand it out, vote for, vote Slater, and all that stuff. I thought it'd be funny. And I thought a lot of the stuff that was inside the story that I wrote, you know, I thought it'd be funny too, like with the brownies I'm, and. I mean, it it definitely it definitely was brilliant with the whole election thing. You know, it it was, and, and I I remember from just sitting behind the scenes that people were really getting into it, and yeah. people were like, you know, you can't have elections for a vice president, and and people were really like into it. Yeah, that's what, <laughs> I mean that's attributed to Tiesa too. I mean, like a lot of the stuff that she did in the story and telling, you know, with the brownie thing, which I thought it's probably, I mean, I've done a lot of things in SL wrestling, but that was probably, if I look at all my line of work, that was probably the best thing I ever did. You know? Yeah. I'm sorry, but I have to completely agree that brownie scene was amazing. But <clears throat> also like you were saying, like, like everybody was getting into it. I was getting <laughs> t-shirts signs that were saying vote Tiesa on them. I was like, where is all this stuff coming from? Yeah, yeah I mean, cool, I, mean yeah, like I, I definitely never seen seen nothing like that before. I mean, it was really good. Everybody was really tuned into the story. I mean, going back and thinking about it, what do you guys think you could have maybe done a little bit better as the story was going on, like I'll let you, it was answer that first. Well, I, I, it's so funny because we've actually been talking about that lately, and like I think one of the things Paul and I have both said was we should have kept the feud going until immortality, <clears throat> because mm -hmm. like I don't know, it just like we feel like there could have been some more stuff added to it now that it's over. Maybe it's just the fact that we've been doing it together for so long that we just wanted to continue a little longer. Yeah, right. I, yeah, like, I didn't really think, like, uh, you know, we, like, it was initially 12 weeks, you know. I wrote, like, the first six weeks, and, you know, then we added some pieces to it, added, like, Mama T to it, and we added me being the VP. But it was, like, I wanted it to portray that, like, my character was so overwhelmed that, like, even though I was going to that match and I wanted looking at it like I'm the VP and I'm going to, it was almost a relief losing the match almost. Like that's why, how I wanted to portray like the character. Like I'm so overwhelmed. I can't make a decision on who the world champion is. I can't make the promises to keep, I can't keep the promises I'm making to certain people. I'm getting my hair dyed because somebody's uh -huh. sneaking into the, my shower and changing my stuff. So it was like, I wanted to portray the thing overwhelmed and I, I want it like, you know, I know what my job is. You know, there's a lot of things in SL wrestling that you look at. And a lot of people, I'm not talking, you know, negative towards anybody. But, like, I know what my job is being a bad guy. Like, I know at the end I got to look humiliated. I got to get the egg in my face. And I, I thought there was no better way than at the end to, you know, get my hair cut and, you know, just look like a complete fool. And But, like, going looking back at it, like, I know I'm a little long-winded answer, but looking back at it, yeah, I wish we kind of would have, like, extended it and extended it to the immor immortality. But it doesn't make me any less happier than how it turned out, you know? Like, right. 
Right. So let, let's talk about Paul getting overwhelmed because uh, if you know, if you guys recall, uh, three of us were in that video where you know Paul was having the meeting with El Jefe in the office, and everybody knows by now it's no big secret that I am the voice of El Jefe, and you know we pretty much shot Spoiler from the hip. Alert. Spoiler alert, yes, I am the voice of El Jefe, yes, you know. So, but anyway, um, you know, we didn't really have a planned script. So we were just kind of going back and forth with each other. And then all of a sudden, you know, El Jefe tells Paul, what are you, uh, overwhelmed? <laughs> and so, and that just became this ongoing joke with yeah. you. And it became now, it was it was a contributing part to this story yeah it definitely was because like i wanted like i i wanted this to betray like i'm doing all the same things that i blamed her for doing you know and right. i wanted to do them like i like i remember a couple promos that we did and i'm blaming her for being incompetent i'm blaming her for not being able to make a decision i'm blaming her for the way oews and shambles and like the way it worked out like how with real life stuff happening, you know what I mean? Like we use that to our advantage as far as, you know, our, our champion left and like there's, that's no, you know, that's no, um, secret, our champion left. So it's like, all right, well now I use that as he left because of me, because I'm such an idiot and I'm such an, you know, such a bad person. Like he couldn't, you know, we use that now. I'm Now I need to figure out a champion. I, I can't figure out a champion. I don't know who the champion's going to be. I can't make the decision. So it was like everything I was blaming her for not being able to make decisions for anything I was doing, and I was doing them ten times worse. I was just <laughs> fought, failing, you know. So that was but like it, the, the good thing about it. Yeah, it, or it, you know, he made all these open mm -hmm. promises for belts and wasn't giving the people chances. So that that was a great turn of effect for me because that also got you know me as Tiesa to get people behind me like look you know I keep my word you know I do this you know I do that to start getting the crowd back onto her side even though she's a total uh -huh. asshole and the one thing that worked perfectly with all this and the reason why I think people mm -hmm. like the reason why I think people are so engulfed in it and like involved in it and there were signs being made and there was like different things because our chemistry was perfect you know what I mean? Like we played very well off each other, which is, you know, you did. You, it, that's the one main thing. Like you see a lot of storylines and like you don't see people kind of like they don't kind of gel. And like I've seen that before, you know, like people don't kind of gel. But the one thing about me and me and TS is like we kind of gel. We're perfect, like perfect as far as like how we talk to each other, perfect, how we do our promos with each other, like everything kind of sunk in and made it very believable. And people had to choose a side like people had to choose the side and you know they chose her over me of course you know and even though like she's the quote unquote heel too like i kind of made her a baby face in the whole sense of the storyline because people hated me so much and i was so of over course. the top you know of course of course and uh, wait 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 hold on another spoiler alert just so you all know paul and i do not write our promos we swing at the hip with Absolutely. everything we said so everything that was said between us during our promos mm -hmm. they were like live nothing written on paper and we just went from there and i think that's i like doing that like i i know a lot of people like you know read promos and stuff and there's nothing wrong with that you know but I like doing, just shooting off. Like I know when I go out there, like all right, I know I gotta, I gotta push this, I gotta push this, I gotta push this. So I'll go out there and I'll just kind of wing it and just kind of push it on my own way, and it feels more like, um, I don't know. I guess I, I don't know what I'm looking for. Like more original. I don't want to say original, but it feels more in the moment. You know what I mean? Like you're in the moment and you can pretty much saying what's on the top of your head and sometimes it's like, more real it's yeah. more real more believable and like there's many a times when i went out there and i was getting ahead of myself like you know like i was trying to keep it on my mind's racing 500 miles an hour and i'm getting ahead of myself and you have to tone yourself back and, but when she came out did her promos just our back and forth like that was all genuine and like we didn't even rehearse it like we just both knew that we had to go out and we had to do a promo and we that's how well we work together like she knew exactly how to answer what I was saying. I knew exactly how to come back with her. And that's that's 100% why 
that storyline got as popular, like got as over as it did, and people were paying attention because we work so well together. So a couple things real quick. So number one, not a lot of people can do what you guys did. Um, some people don't think on their feet that quick. I mean, me personally, I'm, I'm not that quick at times. And but you guys were just like pa 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 going back and forth. It was just like it was like wow. So it felt very natural. Yeah, uh, natural. I think that's the word. I that's think that's the word you needed to use earlier. It was natural. very natural. So it, it it felt like that you guys really did despise each other, and you guys were trying to ruin each other's life. Yep. Uh, and the other thing I want to point out is you know you mentioned earlier about breaking these promises to people. But, you know, we talked about the election, but Paul, you did kind of come across as a politician. I mean, <laughs> if people, if people, so this phony election actually, you know, it, 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 everything flowed nicely with the story. I mean, yeah, like I, I wanted to come off as a slimy politician, like a used car salesman would come into your door. Like a wolf in sheep's clothing, almost. All Shocker. Making, making all these promises to you, like, I'm going to be great, I'm going to, you know, whatever. And I end up, it was just self-serving, more or less. I just wanted to be the guy in charge. It was, I didn't care about anything else but me. And that's kind of what, how I wanted to make that look. Kind of like a real politician. Right. Oh, uh, almost like DHA, who's supposed to be a commentator, but is wanting yeah. to be a wrestler. Yeah. Paul was a commentator slash, you know... Um, but cesspool yeah. um, reporter, reporter wanting to be the big head, you know, honcho of the OEW. Yep. And I, you know, I, I thought it was a really great idea bringing Paul in as the uh, the general manager. I, I thought it was it was really good because eventually, if it wasn't going to be Paul, it was going to be me. Yeah. You know, I'm <laughs> so. But hey, maybe we'll talk to Dante. See, hey Dante, you want to be the general manager of the OEW? Good luck trying to house <laughs> Tiesa. <laughs> Casey King as general manager of the OEW. Well, that's like another thing, like bringing Casey King into it. And like Casey King, you know, he's not. It hasn't been the secret. Like even when I was at Fusion, like pro wrestling, and I was commentator there and, and uh -huh. like manager and everything. Like he's always been a um, a big supporter of mine. And uh, I, you know, I don't. I know like how we portray each other on TV or on YouTube and everything. Like we hate each other. I don't. I think Casey King's great at what he does, and like I wanted to involve him somehow or another. Kind of like you know, you know, because he does a lot of work around not just for us, but a lot of the work for everybody. And it's like it's kind of like a thankless job that like nobody, you don't know who he is, and nobody really knows who he is. But he's a very, very important part of this whole community. You know. Oh, abs absolutely. And I want to give absolutely. Him I wanted to give him like a little time, like something, you know, where he was a part of, which is, you know, why we did that whole thing where he kicked me in the balls and then I kicked him after I got the thing and then he ended up cutting my hair. So it was like the end, it was a nice little um, tying it all up in the bow at the end, like with him cutting the hair, like, which is, I mean, like I've had that, that man bun since day one, you know, so it was like, came a part of my, my personality, a part of my character and everything. And then I, it was kind of fitting that he was the one that to cut it off. So. It was almost that, like his just desserts with yeah. Paul. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely see that. Um, Lex has a little bit of a rivalry with KC, but we really haven't done too much exploring on that one yet. Yeah. That one, you know, we'll have to see what happens in the future with that one. Mm -hmm. So my question is for you, Tiesa. So now that your character uh, basically is now in charge of the OEW again. So what's what's next for Tiesa now that she's now back in the hot seat? Well, she is going to kind of, I think, stay in the hot seat for a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, she gets to bring her persona back and just make everybody's lives miserable. <laughs> Something she enjoys doing. Shocker. Um, yeah, but... Um, <laughs> I really can't give you any, you know, like little spoilers, like, you know, look for like little hints for this or that, because um, into, I think, the next cycle, which will be cycle three after immortality, um, I'm really not sure what is on the books for Tiesa at this point in time. So I guess we're just going to have to keep watching and keep showing up to find out. Because. Yep. Right. 
And Tiesa uh-huh. was the one that brought me back. You know what I mean? Like, she's the one that brought my character back after I, you know, hijacked the show and, and everything like that. And, <laughs> and then we, our story kind of like has been going on for the last. I mean, I know the last story was only a few months and all, but our story has really been going on since May of last year, basically. You know, so, right, so right. I don't think it's so, gonna end. There's still gonna be. There's probably gonna be a lot more coming down the line with me and Tiesa. So let's talk about the hijacking. So there's an ongoing joke that somebody in the roster at the time, who actually is now back with us, decided to do an ejection from the sim. Yeah, that kind of went. That kind of went kind of perfect. Yeah, I mean it worked out. Tell us about that. All right, so all right, I left. You know, I left SL wrestling in I guess December of last year, and right. Um, you know, I didn't, I, I didn't have any plan on coming back. I, I wasn't going to come back. And it's just like the drama and, you know, it's just, it's just, it got to me and it got too much. And, you, and I know the whole thing with the rage quitter, you can call it that. That's what I did. You know, basically just rage quit and I quit because I just couldn't take it. But then like over the course of a few months talking with you on the phone and I decided I wanted to come back, but I want to do something different. And, um, only three people knew what I was going to do that day. And, um, and they're coming in and I jumped the rail and then I started, you know, finding out who called me a piece of shit and I blame everything on you that other people were actually talking about, which was kind of weird, but funny. I mean, and, um, yeah. And I got ejected by JW. JW. But I thought it worked out. It, it looked more natural because it's exactly what you would do if somebody would do that in a show. Like, Somebody would come out and just hijack our shows exactly what you would do, but I think it worked out perfect. And people so, thought it. Like, people really thought it was weird, real. Like, because I remember getting tweets and people sending me direct messages and stuff asking me if I was okay and what happened and why would you do that? Like, so it was like it worked out the way I thought it would. Yeah. As, as a matter of fact, one I am stands out to me and it was Casey King. And I kind of had to play it off a little bit. And, you know, it was hard to kind of play it off. But, you know, be like, dude, I I don't know what happened to Paul. I just, I I don't know. I mean, he's had problems in different feds, but I don't know why he would crash, you know, the sim like that. I mean, this was unheard of. Very, (laughs) so it was, it was definitely a little facade that we had to pull there for uh, for a little bit. But that's like my whole character. Like, I mean, I heard about a lot of things people were saying after I left, you know, and one of them was, um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to admit who the person who sent this to me, but somebody okay. sent me, sent me a, um, a thing from a group. I'm not going to mention any names. And it was one of the people, okay. one of the people in the groups called me a scumbag. And, um, cause I left and I was like, all right, you know, that's fair. And then like, that's how I got the whole name. Like, you know, I'm going to come back and it's going to be like. I'm going to use everything because like the one thing I do, like I don't get like offended by anything that people say about me or nothing like that. I kind of try to figure out a way to use it. You know, I did that since I was back at the other fed, like pink suits. I wear pink. People call me Pepto Paul. I wear the man bun. They said it was a bitch bun or like all that stuff. So I always try to use it. So I've seen a scumbag and I'm trying to think like, how can I use scumbag? And like I said, like nobody wants to be called a scumbag, but I want to take pride in it, you know? And that's how I came up with the scumbag superstar. And kind of like, you know, using everything people are saying against me and just kind of made like a whole character about it, you know? And right. like the cesspool was like the one thing I always called SL Wrestling was like a cesspool because, you know, there is a lot of drama in this community, you know, and it's a great community to be a part of, but it's, there's a lot of drama too. And it's like, sometimes it feels like it's a cesspool, but so I try to and, use like everything that like people were saying or things I thought and try to use it to my character. So it's, it it's, the drama is all over Second Life, unfortunately. Oh, yeah. uh, you know, from role play groups exactly. to clubs to families to businesses. So you're going to find it everywhere. But I, I know Tiesa can vouch for me for this one. I know a little thing or two about rage quitting. And, uh, you know, <laughs> oh, I, I, God, yes. I, so it was back in 2010 uh, when the OEW was first started. Uh, there were four of us that originated uh, the OEW, which I, I mentioned that the other day in my promo with uh, LBA. And um, probably a couple months in, I had some disagreements with one of the guys that co-founded it with me. 
and I got really angry. Um, I got really angry. Uh, T.A., so this was actually before you joined the Fed, because when I came back a couple months later, you were already in the uh, the Fed. You were managing the biker guys with uh, Damien and uh, I think Big it was show. Big Show. Yeah, Big mm-hmm. Show. So I had a disagreement, and I completely lost my cool. And I remember, like, I went off, like, <laughs> at night. And waking up in the morning feeling like really crappy. And this is something that I am not proud of. I still think about it every once in a while now that I've been back for a few years. I could have done things a lot different back then. I could have been a little bit more patient. I could have been a little bit more understanding. You know, uh, I, I felt that I was wronged a lot. And, you know, so I, I, I I left. I, I I left. I said my fu's goodbye, and then eventually I I, I came back. And Tiesa <laughs> will tell you, Tiesa will tell you that this happened again. But I think the second time around, there was other situations that were involved, which I'm not going to mention here right now. It was I, me. It was me. It was. Oh, so all we're gonna me. <laughs> we're, we're gonna we're gonna admit it. Okay, so it's no secret. Tiesa and I we were in a relationship. Uh, 13 years ago. She is actually my baby mama and uh, love the woman to death. She's actually my best friend now. We've been best friends for a very long time. And yes, there was, you know, we broke up. Uh, it wasn't going to work out anymore. And I left um, at the same he time. I saying some very nasty stuff. Uh, no. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. You kind of did too. So oh, yeah. it goes back. It goes back to this though. Like it's, and this is one thing I like. I was new. Like when I came in, like I came into SL just to do wrestling. Like I didn't really know any of this existed. You know, I seen right. this on the YouTube one night. I seen a, an SL wrestling thing. I thought it was a video game. I went and searched. I figured out it was like a community like this. So like I came in just to do that. So I didn't like understand like the drama and everything like that like I know this whole big like, world this right. whole big world yeah. that you've been exposed to yeah exactly <laughs> and it was like i looked at it like it's like a video game like i play a video game if that game becomes too much for me i'm like i'm done playing same thing with this it's like i come on here you know i'm talking i'm talking basically from the paul behind the screen now but like i come on here to get away from my busy crazy life because we all come we all have crazy busy lives you know once the drama on here gets too bigger or more than the real life drama it's like to me it was like it wasn't worth staying anymore because i'm getting more stressed out and more frustrated over something that i try to do for fun than i do in my real life and that's one of the reasons why you know i kind of left you know what i mean i'm like i'm just over it like, right I left and and you got to also understand too we put a lot of ourselves our real yeah. life into this this is like an investment it's that we're doing work. It's a lot of work and and there are going to be emotional, you know, attachments to relationships, to friendships, to what you're doing, you know, and everybody, I I feel that at times everybody's going to want to have a say so in something. And when things usually don't work the way that you want them to work is when we start getting to that point where, um, you know, where we lash out and we want to rage quit. And I, look, I, I've rage quit a lot of times in Second Life. I, I lost count how many times I've rage quit in, in role plays. You know, there's Second Life Wrestling, people that I've talked to. So, uh, you know, and, and something I'm not proud of. It, all we could do is learn from it and move on. And sometimes, you know, I was telling somebody the other day, sometimes you just need a break. And, you know, if if it's not working out for you, you know, stay off the computer for a while. Watch Netflix like I do or play a game or yeah, play Dungeons and that. Dragons with your friends. You know, do something different. Yep, I agree. You know, and so... I mean, there is a lot of good that SL Wrestling does because a lot of us, you know, in our real life, me personally, I don't know about you guys, but I wanted to be a professional wrestler in real life. That was one of my ambitions. I I did attend a wrestling school back in 2001. I think it was 2001, 2002, 2001. uh, The Rusty Brooks Academy um, down in, in South Florida. And I got hurt. I, I, I got hurt and I, I, I tried doing the back bumps. I tried, you know, doing the, the forward rolls. I actually, a good friend of mine in real life, uh, 
was also involved and he was trying to work with me in the ring and it, I just wasn't getting it. And I was just like, you know what? This looks beautiful on TV, but this is not good for my body. So I just, I just bolted and, and, and did something else, but I got a better respect and better understanding for it. So I understand why people want to do second life wrestling because some of us like me or like you, Paul, we don't have this luxury in real life exactly. uh, to do this. And, and, you know, there's other reasons why other people want to do Second Life Wrestling or Second Life in general. And it's a good platform. It's, it, it definitely is a very good outlet for people. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, we're living, you know, where a lot of us are too old to become wrestlers now. So it's just like we're doing something that we couldn't, you know, we, don't, we couldn't do in real life or we're a little too old for, you know. So well, what's you know next? Oh, you know, I'm sorry. You know, Tiesa, it's, go ahead. it's kind of funny because um, when I got introduced into SL wrestling, I had no idea there was even wrestling in SL. Like, and I had been in SL for a good five years. And then when I got introduced to it, I thought it was like really cool. So I don't know how it came above that I joined OEW, but I did. And I loved what I did. It is addictive. I was at every show watching. Right. It's definitely, it's definitely an addiction. Like you have to really, really love wrestling and really enjoy wrestling and want to do this because like you said earlier, like there's a lot of work that gets put in our show every week from videos to production to you know, booking writing matches, matches out, writing matches out. You know, there's a Practicing. lot of, a lot, a lot of work that gets put into it. And Yeah, and Dealing with people is is also a big thing in SL wrestling. You know, you got to deal with a bunch of people. I mean, so, <laughs> you know. You also have to deal with a lot of personalities, too. Right. Because just because it's people, like, we don't all have the same personality. So, you know, like the Tiesa everybody gets to see, you know, at OEW and in the arena is totally different from the Tiesa who is real life running them yep. running right. her right once you once you hit that x button and you're done you know you're you know and it's cool you too, go back like, to real. the one cool thing i like about it and it's it's like going back to our storyline you know like you know i wrote that story like and you know you don't know like to me like some of the stuff i wrote was funny you know what i mean or or, or i thought was interesting and when i shared it with T.S., like you know, she remember her saying, I love it. Like, it's great, whatever. But you still have that fear, like, oh, man, like, this might really, like, shit the bed, you know? Like, especially, like, with that going back to that brownie thing, like, I never showed, like, my my character, basically, I'm allowed. And, like, I try to, you know, garner everybody's attention. But, like, doing something like that where it was completely different than, like, my character, it's, like, you know it was cool to see how people reacted to it. You know what I mean? Like it kind of gives you like that feel good. Like, I really, like you really feel good about it because it's like, I mean, like our whole thing is that we want to entertain people. Like that's the whole thing is just about entertaining people and putting on really cool stories and to get people attached to the characters and stuff like that. So it's really good. Like when your story does succeed and your story, you know, gets a little bit of a following and stuff. It's, it's really cool. Like it, it's really cool feeling that, you're thinking like, man, I wrote this one night because I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't sleep. I figured I'd write the whole story. You know what I mean? Like, right? So it's, it's it's a cool, it's cool. Like when the culmination of it, and like you get some texts and some direct messages saying, "Hey, I really enjoyed that. It was really fun and all that stuff." So that was oh, that's cool. I, 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 this just comes to my mind just thinking about this. So I'm the guy that bailed you out. Yeah my character obviously there's a connection between lex and lex and paul that stems now you know for three years uh and part of it is is our real life you know we get along very well and we have a lot of common interests and things like that so you know you, i'm always the guy that comes out and you know helps you up and 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 you know like you know in you guys's match i came Roots out there. on Root, yeah i'm like yeah i'm cheerleader almost basically but where did you get the idea that I was going to take you to Chuck E. Cheese? Uh, I don't know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, that just kind of. I was like, I was like, because like I wanted, like I, I don't know, like uh, 
when I fell down and like I passed out, like I just started making noises, like I was sleeping and everything out, and like tell my mom I want to, you know, I don't want to go to school yet. <laughs> and it's just when we were walking, <laughs> it's funny that you brought that up because it's like we were walking, <laughs> and I just said it like, "Do you want to go to Chuck? You take me to Chuck E. Cheese?" And your response, you could hear you laughing a little bit, <laughs> and you're like, "Yes, yes, we'll go to Chuck E. Cheese." Like you, <laughs> the best part about that whole thing, the best part about that whole thing is was you were like the way you came into the ring to get me up it was like you were so annoyed it was like you lost respect for me just because i couldn't control myself and you were so damn annoyed that you had to go in and it's like going to a bar and getting your drunk friend off of the bar stool and he's just belligerent and an idiot but that was the best part about it it was just like i just came up with it on a whim like you take me to try. i thought it'd be funny that's 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 hilarious <laughs> Chuck E. Cheese. And my answers were just like, yes, we can go to Chuck E. Yeah, Cheese. Yeah, you were so annoyed. <laughs> and, then, and the same thing with Tiesa, like, we were, when I was, I was trying, like, I, and I mean, it's going to sound unprofessional, but like, and this is another reason to, um, that we don't use scripts. I was trying to make her laugh with some of the stuff I was saying. Right. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I wanted to make her laugh. And, like, you could tell, like, from some of the pauses. And if you watch a YouTube video, a lot of them pauses are her shutting her mic off so she would get her shit together. I almost busted out laughing, like, twice. And you could hear me when I was talking. I started laughing as I was talking. And I was like, oh, no, this is not going to work. Hurry up. Shut your Shut off your mic. <laughs> And the, the funny thing about it is going out today, like, I didn't know what I was going to say or do. Like, I didn't know. I'm just like, I just got to go out there and just act like, like, I don't do drugs in real life or I don't smoke pot or nothing like that. So I had to go out there thinking of somebody for the very first time that ever smoked marijuana or weed or whatever, how they would right. act. Like, how would they act? And it was just like, every, you're seeing everything new for the first time. And that's how I acted. Like, oh, my God, look at the light. Oh, look at this. Look at that. You know, it was just, it was fun. That was the best thing I ever did. And that's how I was. So whose idea was it to throw in Steve Smith in, in that angle with the brownies? Was that was that you, Paul, or was that you, uh, Tiesa? I forget. Yeah, I'm not really sure, but like that was the perfect angle because everybody just assumed Steve is the stoner. Well, yeah. they still assume because you know Paul said he came up positive in drug tests. Yeah, allegedly. I think that's allegedly. something. I think that's something we talked about and like adding that because I thought of the whole brownie thing. Like, you know, that would be funny. Like her poison my brownie, but she had Steve Smith put them there because he's a pothead. You know. <laughs> Yeah, it was fun. And Steve's all like, "Dude, those are my brownies." You know, yeah. Or what about the uh, uh, Steve's appearance in the cesspool? That was a classic. On Halloween, when I wasn't there, and you dress up like me, that was funny too. Oh man, that was a lot of fun. We need to definitely revisit that one day, where you know well, we get Steve to dress Steve up and like Paul you. were supposed to dress up like each other. Yeah. Right opposites of each yeah, other right easy. and because paul couldn't make it uh, i think we threw tiesa in last yeah. minute to fill better. in the gap and it was better it was, it was better well what ended up happening was i ended up selling your feud yeah and that's, and that's <laughs> yeah that was like the cool thing like um you know like steve was like an added like a secondary character in the feud and then like kind of culmination of that was me firing him because of a drug test when I became VP, it was like, when I became VP, it was like, I had agendas, you know, like my first agenda was to bring Casey King down and give him a kick in the nuts like he did to me. And then my second agenda was to, to fire Steve Smith because he's the one that kind of poisoned the brownies that Tiesa, you know, told him to do. So it was like I was trying to get my payback. That was all self-serving, you know. I wanted to be the VP because I wanted to be in charge. My ego wanted to be in charge. And right. it, like, it worked right. out, you know, it worked out having all the secondary things with Mama T. Even Mama T was a big part of it. Like, and like the thing with Mama T that made it better with her is like, we just have a history going back, you know, even the Fusion Pro Wrestling, like, where we just kind of got on each other's nerves and then she would heckle me from the crowd and I would say things back to her. And, and it was like the perfect surprise for that match that we had the first match of her turning on me because no one really would have seen her turning on me. You know what I mean? And, that made it even better. And then the fact that 
she kind of still kept that personality that she has. Like she didn't really trust me, you know what I mean? Cause she knows the kind of person my character is. And so she didn't really trust me, which has made it all the more the sense that she turned on me at the end, you know? Mm-hmm. And that was your idea for, to get mama T to turn on you or. Well, it's kind of our idea. We talked about it a while ago. I think that was kind of yeah. our idea. Both of our ideas. Yeah. Because they're like we said, they're, they're, possibility that you could see more of Paul and Tiesa and at one point in the storyline you know everything could possibly get explained from the beginning to the end and how it all fell into place right yeah I thought, yeah and, and she was the perfect foil for you know for me as far as you know like she just never trusted me that whole storyline and you knew she like her agenda too she wants to be the oew champion women's champion you know and i didn't i didn't get that you know to her and we'll find out if she'll ever get that promise but i didn't i certainly didn't fulfill it right you right. didn't so, really fulfill anybody's promises no, except my own <laughs> <laughs> Which, in all retrospective, it, it got your ass kicked for a second time. <laughs> yeah, and that's, I mean, that's the, the fun part about it. You know, we yeah. would go out and have, like, basically a hardcore match where I just bled and just was looked like a, you know, just got my ass kicked, which I deserved. But we still had fun during that match. <laughs> like, it was even fun writing that match and, and putting it out on for everybody to see. Yep. We, we had a good time with it. Yeah, it was fun. The whole feud was fun. And, like, I, like again... Like you said at the beginning of the of the show is like I wish we should have just if we if we would have extended it I think it it would have made the match at that immortality even more epic but you know both had yeah hands. yeah yep. unfortunately sometimes you know you got to change things up a little bit and you know yeah because I I kind of felt the same too I felt like you know I think we were a little bit robbed of you know you guys you know that and I, I agree with you paul that that match and and with tiesa that match would have been perfect for immortality yeah i mean but but, again, I, but sometimes you got to move on and and we got to get you know the ball rolling and and moving towards new directions I mean, and different things so i get it i still think immortality is going to be great even without us in that match you know so. absolutely absolutely because there there are you know I'm I'm gonna say it like this. There's younger talent that are trying to shine brighter at the moment, and I say that they're younger not because of like the age of the person you know behind the avatar, but because I feel like having been in SL wrestling since 2010, even though I took a break, I'm still an older wrestler. Mm -hmm. So I I feel like there's some shining your talent that need to shine through right now yeah if you if you watch the show lately or if you follow the show you can feel that there's a shift change like a lot of we're getting a lot of gaining a lot of momentum going forward so yeah yeah so paul let me let me ask you a question now that your story is over and um you know what's next for for Paul Slater? Are we going to see the uh, uh, the resurgence of the uh, the cesspool interview segment? Uh, we'll see. We'll see this Sunday. He quit. He quit. He quit. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> I'm not giving up no secrets left. You're not giving up anything. Not even a not even a teaser or anything It'll like be that. Good. Whatever happens next will be good. I can tell you that much. Wow. So one last question, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna cut it here. I'm gonna start with Tiesa first. Uh, so Tiesa, who inspires you when you go out there and and you get into your character? Wh who do you channel? Like you know, because I I know I've seen you on on Twitter a lot where you'll post like these little memes of Stephanie McMahon and things like that. Do you get a lot of influence from Stephanie and other personalities or do you just go out there and do it yourself? So it, I'm kind of glad you asked that question because when I invented Tiesa, mm -hmm. um, I had a whole picture of who I wanted her to mimic back in the day. It was Alita because I loved Alita's badassiness. Um, and I know that is so not a word. <laughs> um, but I just loved the way Lita worked in the ring back then. And as I was trying to find, like, outfits and stuff for Tiesa in the very beginning to match what Lita would wear, 
um, back pre, you know, mesh, um, netted stuff and all. Just, it didn't look right. So right. it was hard. So I gave Tessa like a biker look. And that's when she came in to OEW as a manager for a biker group. And I just kind of changed her look a little bit. Like Stephanie McMahon was great when she started taking over. Um, so I would have to say um, I like both Lita and Stephanie McMahon. Like right now with Tiesa as VP, it's more of a Stephanie McMahon-ish feel. Um, so, yeah, I guess you could say she's like that person that I'm going to mimic to a point. Um, right. But with wrestling and all, like, I, I did like the way Lita wrestled, but I'm just not, Tessa's not a high flyer like that. She just became a brawler because of um, working with a few people back in the original OEW mm -hmm. who helped me kind of figure out, since she's from Jersey, you know, that they like to fight. They like to fist fight and street fight and brawl and stuff. So that's why she brawls like she does. New Jersey, New Jersey. <laughs> yeah, New Jersey. That's 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 awesome. And and you know, it is natural to to draw inspiration from other characters or personalities when you're trying to to depict a character of your own. Like a personal example, you know, I'm a role player, and sometimes there there have been certain role plays that I do in Second Life where if it's a created character and not necessarily a canon, I, I have to pull from different characters. So I like character A, I like this personality, what he does here, and I like what, you know, character number B, letter excuse me, letter B does over here, and then kind of work it into my own. So I definitely understand, you know, what you're saying about, Lita and and Stephanie, because you know you look up to these people and you draw that inspiration because you want to kind of be like them, but then again you don't. You want to be your own person. So I, I definitely could relate to that. What about you, Paul? Who who inspires you uh, for the Paul Slater uh, persona? I mean, like I, I I'm kind of old school. Like I like. Like All right. when, I was still, when I was still in commentary, it was like Bobby Heenan, but like I kind of took more inspiration off of Corey Graves, and like I know a lot of people don't like Corey Graves, but I think he's like a perfect commentator as a heel for some reason. Like I like, so I kind of presented myself kind of like with that, where I try mm -hmm. not to go over the top. I try to tell the matches like they were, even if they're a face and a heel. Like I would try to keep like if I was calling matches, I would try to keep it as down the middle as I could. But like as far as like my character, like is my personality character um, that I do now, like it's the complete opposite of the type of person I am, you know, um, in real right. life, like I'm not, you know, boisterous and I don't, I'm not like a scumbag, you know, um, <laughs> and you're so, surely not a pretty boy. <laughs> right. And, um, Oh, I'm pretty. I'm I'm pretty pretty. I'll, I'll, you know, I'll wow, that was just that. a dig at you being ugly. I'm not ugly. I'm not ugly, Lex. But um, <laughs> handsome, handsome yeah. Paul Rugged, Slater. Ruggedly handsome. Um, ruggedly <laughs> handsome Paul Slater. Hey, that could be a, that could be a new persona for you. But Never it's, know. It's kind of like I don't. I mean, I take inspiration on things like as far as storytelling and stuff. Like if I seen something like from years ago and I like it, and I try to tell my own way of it, like the stories and stuff, but. As far as my character on screen that I'm doing presenting now, it's it's just kind of the opposite of me, and I I don't really have like I don't want to say I don't. It's kind of like just a character I kind of developed on my own. Like, I mean, I try to be a bad guy, I try to be like a Bobby Heenan type of character, but my character is so different. Like, I'm not a manager, I'm not a really right. a wrestler. Like, really, in all reality, I shouldn't be on the roster as a talent because like I don't really do much. But you know, aside from talk and 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 stir the pot, so. It's just, right. I try to be as complete opposite as a person in real life that I would dislike. But that makes you, a, but see, but see, that's what makes you a talent is right. because of this type of character that you are. Because, you know, if you were to go look at WWE's roster or even AEW's roster right now, they have the non-wrestlers listed on their roster, yeah. part of the character. So you essentially are a talent. You know, you are Paul Slater. You are the scumbag superstar. You know, you are, you know, 
you know, that's you. Yeah, you know, the, yeah, you are. Paulie. Yeah, Paulie. <laughs> you that guy, Paulie. Yeah. And it's just like, I don't like. I don't want to say like I. I can't really. It's like kind of like a Paul Heyman almost. Um, a little bit of Roddy right. Piper. Um, right. You know, it's just like it's just it's just like a potpourri of different characters. Like my main thing is, I want to go out every week, and whether you you like me or you hate me, like I just want to entertain people. I want to make people laugh, and that's that's what I try to do, you know, and I try to be the complete opposite person that i um, really am in real life. So kind of, I think to some degree, I think we all uh, feel that way. Yeah. I mean, I, cause I have been involved in, in some minor projects in real life when it comes to acting and performing. And, you know, when I go out there, whether it's Lex, whether it's Steve, you know, uh, even Bill, um, I like to perform and I like to entertain people yeah. and I, I, I want people to go back and smile or laugh or cry, whatever the circumstances are. Cause you want, you want, you want to have that effect. Exactly. Um, and, one thing I like is just like you, I like it. Like you, like you just said, and I'm sure she has said the same thing. Like we do this cause we like entertaining people, you know, we do this yeah. because, you know, and it's, it's fun when you get a little bit of a following and people follow you on Twitter and people make fun of you on Twitter and people come after you. It's like, to me, it's like, all right, you're paying attention, you know, yeah. and it's, it's a cool feeling. Yeah. I mean, and here, here's something uh, that a lot of people don't know. Uh, I know Tiesa knows, but Lex Umaga was never a character in the original run of the OEW. I didn't know. Um, Le Lex, Lex was created. Well, so when I got back involved in SL wrestling in, in 2020, um, right just before, right before the pandemic, and I was involved with another company for about 10 months. And at the time, I was listening to a lot of podcasts like Eric Bischoff, Jim Cornette, you know, and tuning into a lot of the stuff that was going on around the wrestling world. And, of course, my love for 80s and 90s wrestling. So one of the managers that really stands out the most for me, and you just mentioned him, was Bobby Heenan. And there's not a lot of Bobby Heenans in SL Wrestling. There isn't. Uh, Jim Cornette was another uh, inspiration for me. Uh, the loud mouth, talking, you know, controversial, you know, calling people out on stuff. and and. So I tried to mix a little bit of that and, and make, you know, Lex Umaga who he is. A lot of managers wore funky colored suits. They look like pimps. Uh, a lot of their suits were really like dandy-ish. So that's what I'm trying to bring to the table when I play Lex. Now, I, I've gotten some inspiration from Chris Jericho when he was Le Champion, you know, with his funky colors and styles and different things like that. Um, so I, I draw a lot of inspiration, but Lex was never, Lex was never a character in the first r run of the OEW. My, my original character was Evan Briggs and he was the on-air owner and, and general manager uh, who was modeled. We, you know, we talked about, you know, drawing inspiration earlier. I had no clue when I was getting involved in SL wrestling, I, I didn't know how this worked, what you could do. So, uh, David Hawk actor, as you know, we all know him suggested, you know, well, why don't you be like a Vince McMahon type character? And I was like, hmm, I don't, don't really want to be like Vince. And so I said to myself, I, I remembered Eric Bischoff because I did watch a lot of WCW. And I remembered some of the stuff that Eric did with the NWO and his, you know, his involvement with that. So I became like Eric Bischoff to the point where I named my guy Evan Briggs EB, and he looks a lot like Eric Bischoff. And uh, that's that's what we went with at the time, and it was successful. Um, you know, it was it, it was a lot of fun to do. We but yeah, tell, there we was how you lived a gimmick with that suit you're wearing. <laughs> <laughs> well you know i mean i'm still the host of the complex so i, I you know i gotta kind of keep the character so what would you prefer blue jeans and a shirt <laughs> yeah maybe <laughs> i mean we all dress down you yeah. could have too yeah, like yeah. Casual, casual uh out of character interview 
Yeah, that's true. Or maybe I'll just take off the sunglasses. Yeah, How about you're that? All right. You're all right. <laughs> oh, all right, guys. Come on, you want to leave those pretty pink sunglasses on? Yep. Oh yeah. Well, you know. So, all right, guys. Well, this was a lot of fun. Um, we definitely need to do this again. Um, you know, maybe pick a topic to discuss. This was really great. Yeah, this was yeah. like our pilot episode uh, today. This was this was a lot of fun. Yep. Absolutely. All right. Well, thanks again, guys, for joining us. And uh, this is Lex Umaga signing out. <laughs> <laughs>